Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Bhagavad Gita playlist and today we are going to continue with the 8th verse from the 2nd chapter and till now we saw that Arjuna's situation is not very good because he told in the last verse, in the 7th verse that now I am confused about my duty and have lost all composure because of miserly weakness. In this condition I am asking you you means to Lord Krishna, to tell me for certain what is best for me. Now I am your disciple and a soul surrendered unto you. Please instruct me. So Arjuna has basically surrendered in this verse. So that is the key, one of the key verses of the Gita. Kalpanya dosho pahata Because this is the verse where Arjuna admits that he is confused, he is feeling headless, he doesn't know what he should do. Right, so that's a very important verse because that is the mood in which the Gita will be understood only. Because if we think that we will understand the Gita just by reading shlokas or by memorizing or by understanding, it can't happen, you see. We have to surrender from our insight to Krishna. Only then we will understand, all right? Or else we will become a theoretical scholar of the Gita. We can quote 10, 100,000 shlokas. We can say Krishna says this, he says that. But there is no inner transformation. All right. And now we will continue with the 8th shloka of the 2nd chapter. So let us offer prayers to our preceptors. Om Agyan Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shlakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venava. All right, so eighth verse of the second chapter. Nahi prapashyami maam upanudyat ya chokam uchoshnam indriyanam avapya bhumava asaptanam ridyam. Wow, beautiful. Rajyam suranam apichadhi patyam. Adhipatyam, so he is speaking about authority here. So the translation is, I can find no means to drive away this grief which is drying up my senses. I will not be able to dispel it even if I win a prosperous unrivaled kingdom on earth with sovereignty like the demigods in heaven. So he is saying that, there's no use. I can't. <laughs> Even if I win the kingdom of Indra, basically that's what he's saying. You know? A kingdom like the demigods. But still, he will not be able to dispel this grief which he is feeling because he's thinking he's going to kill the uh, his cousins and his seniors like Bhishma and Dona especially. So what is the use of this war? And many times uh, people are also ignorant. Some people who just think that, oh, just be peaceful, you know, don't do anything, don't kill anybody, don't do this, don't do that. They also uh, they also ask the same question. Oh, wow, what was the need of the Krukshetra war? You know, I mean, so many people were killed. You, know, you should never kill anybody, you know, because Ahimsa Parmo Dharma, that is one of the uh, one of the principles. Well, well, Ahimsa uh, is definitely a principle, but when that Ahimsa is leading to further violence, then that is not Ahimsa, that is that is Hinsa actually, that's cowardliness. Okay. So that's what Krishna did. Krishna said that these Kauravas, they do not deserve to live in this earth because they have terrorized everybody. And we know the history. They have poisoned Bhima when he was young. He was, a, he was, he was so young when they poisoned him. And then they insulted and tried to disrobe Draupadi and by Krishna's grace her honor was saved but even after that Duryodhan had uh, played you know before that the gambling match and later on so many atrocities so Duryodhan and his company you know they don't deserve to live that's what Krishna said and because Bhishma and Drona were fighting on their side so they also had to be killed all right, now let's start with the purple. It's quite a long purple. <laughs> Although Arjuna was putting forward so many arguments based on knowledge of the principles of religion and moral courts, 
it appears that he was unable to solve his real problem without the help of the spiritual master lord shri krishna there you go very important statement even if we have knowledge of religion and uh, moral codes but if we do not have a guru we will still be confused because we know the rules but we don't know how to apply them in our life that's the problem you see so there you need a guru he could understand that his so called knowledge was useless useless <laughs> in driving away his problems which were drying up his whole existence and it was impossible for him to solve such perplexities without the help of a spiritual master like lord krishna academic knowledge scholarship high position etc are all useless in solving the problems of life birth old age disease and death janma mrityu jara vyadi dukha doshanu darshanam basically that's the four problems of life help can be given only by a spiritual master like krishna therefore the conclusion is that a spiritual master who is 100% krishna conscious is the bona fide spiritual master for he can solve the problems of life lord chaitanya said that one who is a master in the science of krishna consciousness regardless of his social position is the real spiritual master kiba vipra kiba nyasi shudra kene nai yei krishna tattva veta se guru hai it does not matter whether a person is a vipra vipra means a learned scholar in vedic vedic wisdom or or is born in a lower family or is in the renounced order of life if he is a spirit, if he is a master in the science of krishna he is the perfect and bona fide spiritual master chaitanya charitamrit madhya 8.128 that's where this is mentioned so without being a, a master in the science of krishna consciousness no one is a bona fide spiritual master it is also said in the vedic literature satkarma nipuno vipro mantra tantra visharada avaishnavo guru nasa nasyad vaishnava sa swa pacho guru a scholarly brahmana expert in all subjects of vedic knowledge is unfit to become a spiritual master without being a vaishnava or expert in the science of krishna consciousness but a person born in a family of a lower caste can become a spiritual master if he is a vaishnava or krishna conscious this is mentioned in the padma puran so basically the conclusion uh, here till now is that when we are going and finding a guru or seeking a guru we should not check or oh, what background he is from which family he is from which, what is his caste or what is what is what is his family like that that we should not check because if the guru is expert in science of krishna which means he knows how to actually advance in spiritual life then there is no need to check anything else that it itself is sufficient we don't have to check if he is a eloquent speaker we don't have to check how many verses he knows we don't have to check all this all right so here is the parameter if he knows the science of spirituality that's it that's enough nothing else is required he does not have to come from a poor family or a rich family all right educated uneducated nothing else is needed the problems of material existence there you go birth old age disease and death cannot be counteracted by accumulation of wealth and economic development in many parts of the world there are states where which are replete with all facilities of life which are full of wealth and economically developed yet the problems of material existence are still present so this is primarily uh, referring to the developed countries okay where there is lot of wealth and economic development but still there is birth old age disease and death these four problems still exist there wherever you go they are seeking peace in different ways but they can achieve real happiness only if they consult krishna or the bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam which constitute the science of krishna through the bona fide representative of krishna the man in krishna consciousness so 
If economic development and material comforts could drive away one's lamentations for family, social, national or international inabilities, then Arjuna would not have said that even an unrivaled kingdom on earth or supremacy like that of the demigods in the heavenly planets would be able to drive away his lamentations. Wow. Amazing. That means if it was possible, then Arjuna would have never felt like that because he himself was so powerful. He, he was like millions and billions and trillions of times powerful himself. You know, what to speak of when all the Pandavas were together, forget about that. He was so powerful alone. You know, I mean, in comparison to what any normal man can be in this age of Kali Yuga today. But even he is feeling that even if I, I, I may be powerful and even if I get unrivaled kingdom, the word unrivaled is used, you see. Unrivaled means there, there are no enemies, there are no elections, there are no competitors, nothing is there. Like it's in the heavens, yeah. Sometimes the demons go and attack, but that's a rare occasion. It doesn't uh, happen like that. You know, every now and then they are attacking. All right, it's not like that. He he sought therefore refuge in Krishna consciousness, and that is the right path for peace and harmony. Economic development or supremacy of the world can be finished at any moment by the cataclysms of material nature by the catastrophes basically like one tsunami comes and one whole city is wiped out one earthquake comes and the whole city is finished even elevation into a higher planetary situation as men are now seeking on the moon planet can also be finished at one stroke like many times uh, nowadays people are very much interested to know you know if there is life in moon or mars so that's what is mentioned you know even that can be finished in one stroke you know who knows if there are like there are you know this asteroids and there are meteors and so many things going on in the universe so imagine some other planet comes and clashes with any of these you know existing planets then what will happen you know it that planet itself will be destroyed so what to speak of going and staying there the Bhagavad Gita confirms this. Chinne punya martya lokam vishanti. When the results of pious activities are finished, one falls down again from the peak of happiness to the lowest status of life. Chinne punya martya lokam vishanti. It's a very famous shloka. Many politicians of the world have fallen down in that way. Some downfalls only constitute more causes of lamentation. The politicians sometimes they win elections, they are at the top. When the punya is finished, then they fall, they lose the election. Therefore, if we want to curb lamentation for good, then we have to take shelter of Krishna. As Arjuna is seeking to do. So Arjuna asks Krishna to solve his problem definitely, and that is the way of Krishna consciousness. So the point here is the essence of this video is that there are many problems which we may face in life. And we may try to find many solutions, which is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You have a health problem. You have to go to a doctor. You have some doubts on uh, your studies, you know, science, maths, economics, whatever. You have to go to a professor and ask. You have issues uh, in your married life or relationships. Then you can go to and talk to a ma marriage counselor. That's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. The only thing is the four prime issues in life, which is birth, old age, disease, and death. All right, because birth is one of the most painful experiences and that is why uh, no baby when he or he comes out he or she the baby is not smiling the baby is crying always why because the baby is terrorized by the the process of birth it's so painful you are just pushed through you know such a such a narrow path from your mother's body and then finally you come out imagine of course, we don't remember that. That is why we feel that we, we feel, oh, how can birth be miserable? No, birth is very miserable. That is why every baby, when the baby is out, the baby is always crying. Right? Now, it does not mean that the baby can't cry or should not cry. Or The point here is that the, the baby is suffering. That is why the baby is crying. We have to understand. All right? And then it's such a painful experience for the mother also such a painful experience for both 
all right so then birth old age needless to say people are spending so much billions and billions and billions of dollars you know people, companies spend why they want to stop old age they want to reverse old age which is actually not possible which is very fake and superficial and very artificial because aging is a natural process of the body you can't stop it all right of course if if your lifestyle is good if you are living in harmony with the universe if you are doing the things that you like and you are cultivating spiritual wisdom then you will live very long and this is not to compare that suppose a person is eating meat or drinking wine and then he lives 80 years and then suppose a religious person lives 80 years 90 years it's not that comparison of how much the person lives but what i mean to say here is that if we follow the vedic lifestyle right whatever is mentioned in the scriptures then we will experience a very long life all right because it doesn't matter you stay 80 years or 100 years but what it matters is what you are doing during that time when you are living all right so our quality of life will improve that will increase all right and quantity of course depends on our karma but that's a misery you see old age is a misery everybody is fearful of old age nobody wants to become old nobody wants to look older that is why you know people are like you know spending so much they are uh, covering they they have all this you know like uh, makeup in the face then you know when their hair goes becomes white then they will use all this you know i don't know what all things they use but the thing is everybody is fearful of old age okay then disease birth old age disease needless to say so much suffering is there you know. Anything can happen. Anything can, I mean, nobody can claim that tomorrow morning when I get up, I will not have a disease. Anything can happen. You know? And then the last is death. Well, needless to say, such a painful experience, the most painful of all the four. All right. So when Arjuna, now Arjuna is also concerned about all this, you know, death of his uh, relatives and his elders. All right. So he's concerned about these, one of the four primary problems in life which cannot be solved by any amount of economical, monetary, or any materialistic means. All right, so then the question is, how do we solve this problem? Well, when we are here in this material world, we cannot avoid these problems. You are materialistic, you are spiritual, whoever you are, you have to undergo these problems, all right? But when the soul elevates himself, then the soul does not have to take birth again in this material body so by that he can go beyond this material world to the spiritual realm where he will find eternal peace and happiness all right so when we say that spirituality is the solution to all these four problems it does not mean that from tomorrow if you start doing spiritual practices your you will never die or you will become immortal it's not like that because we may take to spiritual path but we are still in this material body and the karma is there so whatever is there in the car in our karma that will happen irrespective of the fact you are spiritual or how much spiritual you are you are material or whoever you are all right but the point is spirituality helps us to equip ourselves in a better way much better way so that we can cope up with the difficulties and challenges in life in a much better way okay and that's what arjuna is doing he's very intelligent he's not going on asking just anybody what should i do so he is going on asking krishna so that's the secret how to how to solve the problems of life you know, the prime issues in life because all the problems in life can be solved if we elevate ourselves spiritually you see you know, uh, like for example corruption there's so much corruption these days in every country almost why is there corruption because there is greed okay there is there is murder and so many other things are increasing crimes are increasing every day why because there's greed there is envy there is jealousy you know i know where um, uh, like a man goes and kills another man why because he wants to enjoy with the wife of that man well that's what lust what is that that's lust that's what ravana did all right so when these selfish selfish tendencies grab us from deep down inside then we cannot be good human beings it's not possible and that's what is happening these days because people have forgot their forgotten their roots and they are no, no longer doing any spiritual practices and that's happening in india in 
Nepal, Pakistan, US, Germany, UK, wherever you go, you will see disintegration is increasing. All right. So if you go to United Nations, you know, the number of flags are always increasing. If you go 10 years back, the number of flags were less. And now the number of flags are more. Well, what does it mean? It means that the nations are becoming more and more you know, granular. People are not able to stay united. Within one country, states have been um, partitioned. They've been bifurcated. And then the, the unity is going down. It's happening in, within state districts. All right. So, for example, uh, when my grandfather, he was an IS officer in India. So, when he was a collector in his times, you know, then, of course, later on, my father was also a collector in one of these states of Assam. Uh, I mean, a district of Assam. But the size of the district which my father was the collector it was is one fifth of the district which my grandfather was the collector. Okay, why? It is a, it is the same district, but it has been uh, separated into three, four, five parts. Okay, now maybe another part has come up. So disintegration is increasing, you know, marriages are falling apart, you know, relationships are not working, families are not happy together, you know, families are breaking apart, joint families are becoming nu nuclear families. Why all this uh, nuisances happen? Nuisances are happening because people have become, uh, people have forgotten that you know, there is something beyond life also, beyond materialistic life. So just for the materialistic pleasure, they are ready to do anything, anywhere, anytime. They are ready to cheat anybody, stab anybody. All right. So the ultimate solution to all these material problems is that first we have to elevate our consciousness. After that, these solutions will work. After that, whatever is there, corruption, you want to make stricter laws, make it, you want to catch them and put them in the jail, do all this. But if, if you do not... Uh, take care of the consciousness of people then what will happen today we'll put somebody in jail tomorrow he will come out and he will do some bigger crime okay so uh, materialistic uh, laws and rules and regulations they can help us only after the base is good okay which means once the people the gen general public they they become more and more spiritual then automatically these things will reduce okay and then we will be able to manage our resources thousand times more efficiently because there will be no greed there will be no selfishness there will be no there will be no envy nobody will want to pull anybody down you know? so that's what is the most important thing that we need to do how to solve the problems of life so we have to refer to gurus our gurus and especially books like the bhagavad gita and shrimad bhagavatam so I have been uh, making this video. So if you have not watched my other videos of this playlist, then please watch it. And you can also watch the Shrimad Bhagavatam playlist. And by that, you will also understand how to take divine shelter of Krishna. All right. Thank you very much. If you are new to the channel, then please subscribe to it. And if you want a consultation from me, then you can go down to my website, the description section. And yes, God is there with you all the time. Just look to him and you will find him. You will find him in the Gita, definitely. All right. Thank you and see you again. Bye.